Alrighty, folks, so the Game Awards 2023 just wrapped up. If you're wondering what one game of the year, it, of course, as RGT predicted, was Baldur's Gate 3, which kind of came as, as a bit of a surprise to some people. Obviously, there's the whole fact that Zelda and Spider-Man are much more household names, including Mario as well. But Baldur's Gate 3, I always felt, was going to win the Game of the Year awards because when you look at the the panel of people that are voting on this sort of stuff, I always felt that we're going to go for Baldur's Gate 3 just because of how much positive buzz it had and what some of these review scores were. But of course, it's not just an award show. It's a reveal show, and that's what a lot of people probably tune in for with this sort of stuff. And there was a lot of reveals at this event. And there was honestly some stuff that I really liked at this event. And there was some stuff that I definitely did not like at this event. So we're going to talk about the positives and the negatives. I'll try to be more positive than I normally am. I'm sure you're watching this, Jeffrey. You did say that you enjoy watching my recaps of your events. So if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and retweet the video, Jeff. Like, throw me a bone here. Like, Jesus Christ. All right, so let's talk about some good stuff. God of War, Ragnarok, Valhalla. A free, yes, free DLC coming to God of War Ragnarok on December 12th that includes roguelike elements. I'm not a big fan of roguelike elements. However, I am a fan of free DLC. I think this is a very good move by Sony. You're making people interested in this game once again. You didn't really have anything major to show off at this event, but you still managed to have a very impressive presence and come away with people still remembering you and your, your platform from this event. So God of War, Ragnarok, Valhalla, December 12th, free DLC. We also got an update on Hellblade 2, another look at the game. I've seen this game a million times, but hey, you know, it's always nice to see it. I'm a big fan of the first Hellblade game, so I have high expectations for Hellblade 2. We didn't get a release date, though. I thought that was a little bit disappointing. We just got the generic 2024 tag. I felt like this would have been like a perfect place to talk about this game as far as a release least it was concerned because you know we're, we're wondering what xbox's 2024 is going to look like and we didn't really get all that much more information from this event now a game that caught me by surprise was a game called no rest for wicked this is being done by moon studios who of course is known for the ori games but this looks absolutely nothing like an ori game it's a gritty action adventure sort of top down hack and slash element game i thought this looked really cool i really liked the art style of it it looked very dark and brooding, which is always cool for a video game. And it comes out on March 1st, so definitely interested in that game. I will be checking that out because you know, I like Moon Studios. I think they do good work. RPG fans got Visions of Mana. Yes, folks, a new Mana game, which, of course, got its start on the Super Nintendo, so I never really got in on that level, but I played subsequent Mana games after the fact. I believe there was one on the DS that I played. Of course, there was that other one that came out somewhat recently, but this game looks like a, a big game. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the scope of it looks absolutely massive and i think that fans of the action rpg genre are definitely going to enjoy this game and as someone who's grown to appreciate the action rpg genre a lot more in my later years of life not that i'm dying or anything but you know i, I think this looks like a really cool game so i'm definitely looking forward to that we also got Xbox making a bit of a splash here. I'll give them a little bit of credit. Finally getting that Marvel game exclusive to Xbox. And that is Blade, which I love the Blade movies with Wesley Snipes. Triple H even was in a Blade movie. I'm not big into comic books and crap like that. Not to say that they're crap, but I just, I just never got into comic books. So I know this is a long and storied character, but I definitely learned about it from the Blade movies growing up. But I think this is going to be really cool. Now, Arcane is the company doing it. Of course, they did just do Redfall. That wasn't that great, but I have high hopes for this game. It's going to cook for a while. It's not coming out anytime soon. Go ahead and add it to the pile of Xbox games that are just missing in action. Fable, Perfect Dark, Blade, all that sort of stuff. They can all hang out together, but definitely a very cool announcement. And our final big announcement of the event was Monster Hunter Wilds, a new Monster Hunter game coming out in 2025. That's cool. I need to see the game, though, but... I saved the two biggest announcements, in my opinion, for last. First off, Jurassic Park Survival. Christ on a cracker. It's like they came up to me and said, RGT, you know, we want to do a new Jurassic Park game. But what, what should we do? You know, we don't, we don't know. We've done the park builders. We've done this. We've done that. What should we do? 
and then I guided them for this because this game, Jurassic Park Survival, looks absolutely awesome. It takes place right after the first Jurassic Park movie. You play as a person that ends up stranded on the island and you have to survive. It is a game much in the vein of Alien Isolation where these dinosaurs are trying to hunt you down. You got to outwit them. You got to be cunning. You're going to be interacting with various dinosaurs and animals that will be interacting with you. Of course, there's weather stuff going on. They didn't show too much gameplay, but I I am, I am so on board with this. As someone who loves the original Jurassic Park movie, and it's definitely in my top 10 movies of all time, something that I watch all the time, I am so stoked for this because it's the original Jurassic Park. It's not you know Jurassic World or the, or the sequels that came out after Jurassic Park, which I like, but this is old school Jurassic Park going back to its grassroots, and I was so excited for this. If it wasn't for the other announcement, this would have been my biggest announcement but the biggest announcement was sega sega is back sega is back with not one not two not three not four but five new games from classic ips they announced it in one trailer we're getting a new golden axe a new crazy taxi a new shinobi a new jet set radio a new streets of rage it's like bro did you finally listen to me i've been making videos about how Sega needs to go back to their classic IP and start utilizing them for years. If you've been a longtime viewer of this channel, you would know that at least once a year, I make my Sega State of the Union address where I'm just like, why aren't you doing this sort of stuff? But something finally clicked with Sega, and I am so... Do you know how long it's been since we've gotten a new Golden Axe? Since we've gotten a new... Shin the last time we saw Shinobi was the 3DS game, which was actually, funnily enough, my first ever written review published on the internet for a website that I was working for, but like a new golden axe, new crazy taxi jet set radio, bro. This was so hype. This was so, I was shrieking like a little girl on, uh, on spawn waves channel. Cause we were watching it over there. I was ecstatic with this. I was so thrilled. And this was by far the biggest announcement for me. This was just so awesome and so captivating. There was a bunch of other games, some of them of varying interesting quality. You know, some of them are going to appeal more to others, you know, like Final Fantasy 16's got demo or a DLC that's out right now and another one coming out in 2024. I feel like it was a decent variety of stuff. But now we have to kind of talk about some of the some of the things I didn't like. And I'm not going to focus necessarily on games that I didn't like because I understand games are subjective. People like different sorts of things. But first and foremost, we got to talk about Hollywood because Hollywood was strutting their stuff out here. Matthew McConaughey is in some new game called Exodus and like that's cool. Like, I understand, you know, the SAG AFTRA stuff is going on. You got you're looking for work, but we don't need all of these Hollywood celebrities coming to the event, presenting awards to people, making their jokes. Like it just feels so tacked on and unnecessary and more like a self-serving reflection that almost like gaming isn't bigger than Hollywood. When at the end of the day, it is in every single sort of metric. We also had Kojima come out there. He talked about OD, which is his new Xbox game that uses cloud gaming technology. But the man was out there for like a good 10 minutes with Jordan Peele. He came out uh, towards the end of him talking. And like, I'm stoked because I like Jordan Peele. And I think when it comes to horror games, or I guess you should say horror movies, like he does a great job, like Get Out and um, uh, Us and like all, all that sort of stuff definitely hits with me. I didn't like Nope all that much but the other films are absolutely fantastic but i don't need to see someone talking about a game while not really talking about a game for 10 minutes and this is where we kind of parlay into the whole fact that always the awards take a back seat to the the reveals or the hollywood people because you could go out there and if you're presenting an award you get all the time in the world you want to talk but when you're an accepting an award you get like 40 seconds and they start playing the music to like hey wrap that shit up b instead of just like not giving kojima a huge segment to talk about absolutely nothing not letting these hollywood celebrities and people just ramble on about stuff and make their crappy jokes and look towards the audience to have some sort of reaction which of course they give a forced reaction to because you could pretty much take a shit in a box and put it on the stage there and tell people to clap and they would like freaking seals but i think the funniest thing the funniest snub the funniest no show of this event was of course nintendo because some of these nintendo channels out there some of them i'm friends with bro they had you believe in that switch 2 was gonna be there when rgt was like yo 
Kate and Krista went on record saying, hey, Nintendo of America does not care about the Game Awards. They didn't even do their little trailer of, like, a collaboration of games. And for some reason, people thought that Nintendo was going to have all this crap there. And it's like, dude, no. No, they're not. But the biggest problem with this award show was just the length. The pre-show started at 7.30, which, of course, consists of awards and announcements. And the show went on till a little bit after 11 o'clock. There's absolutely no reason for it to last that long. You could have cut out an hour of filler that you had there. You could keep your musical performances if you want to. Just cut down these, these nonsensical discussion parts that people are having. Cut down the, the Hollywood celebrities. Make it focused more so on gaming. There's no reason for a presentation center to be able to give a big speech but the person accepting the award gets 40 seconds that's absolutely ridiculous i will say though jeff good job with security this year you had dudes right big burly dudes right up there on stage you had ropes where people would walk through so you know good job on that um for the safety not only of yourself but the presenters everyone involved with the showcase you definitely need to take that sort of stuff seriously especially in this crazy world but overall i didn't hate the show i definitely loved absolutely love some of the announcements there it just went on for way too damn long dude it went on for way too damn long we need a, a, a tight two hours that's all you need for this show a tight two hours and you're golden you are absolutely golden but jeff's gonna get his money jeff throw me some money bro we're homies we follow each other on twitter i know you're watching this video because we're brethren we're brethren Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts on the Game Awards in the comment section down below. I do know that I have a large contingent of Nintendo fans that watch me, so I'm sure you guys absolutely hated this show, but, I mean, I didn't. I didn't hate it. You give me Jurassic Park in a, a survival setting, you give me a bunch of new Sega stuff, like, bro, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta enjoy it at least a little bit, you know, you can't be negative just for the sake of being negative, people think I'm negative for the sake of being negative, when I'm negative about something, I genuinely just do not like it, I just think it's dumb, I don't like it, it's not for me, so my, my, I feel like my negativity is justified, give me your thoughts, give me your comments in the comments section down below, and as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video, it's late, this is probably going up at like midnight, so salute to you for watching this video, I don't know if I'm gonna do something on Friday, but I might, just depends, Anyways, I'm rambling. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.